ACS gas training, gas pipe sizing. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm at Viva Training Academy and I'm with Russ, the expert trainer. And Russ is gonna go through pipe sizing. We've got a few charts. This is a question that I get asked quite a lot. And when I do my sizing and I say, we're only allowed one millibar drop over the installation, etc on the pipe sizing and people question that and say, well, manufacturer instructions say we can go down to 15 millibar, etc." And And these instructions, people are misreading the instructions. So in this video today, Russ is gonna go through pipe sizing. So some charts on there. There's also some charts here with the different, different sizes for different pipes. And Russ is gonna go through all these also when you've got elbows and you've got T's, what, how they affect your pipe sizing. So this is gonna be a very, very detailed video. Um, it's gonna go through the pipe sizing from start to finish, really. Um, but if you do have any questions about pipe sizing, and then obviously please ask them um, in the comments below. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So let's, uh, let's go over to Russ. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Thanks Alan for that. Today we're going to look at pipe sizing. Uh, domestic pipe sizing, we'll call it on, on your ACS, uh, up to the maximum of 35 mil. But all I want to do today is give you the principles of pipe sizing and show you some simple, straightforward exercises and uh, practices. There are many, many different ways of pipe sizing. Different publications will show you different methods. Uh, I am slightly of the old school, as you may imagine, and I've done it one way for a long time. But there is a new method out now, which I'm going to show you today, that I, I'm quite impressed with and I've adopted for myself. Um, different publications, as I say, show you different ways. This one we're using from our training equipment, our training manuals at Viva Training. Uh, we use Logic, uh, but you'll get the same information out of uh, other publications. Example, British Standards, Corgi Books, that type of thing. They all have the same systems in them. Hopefully, by the end of this, and I'm trying to keep it as simple and break it down as much as I can. You'll understand where we're coming from and why we pipe size, and of course, a simple method of how to pipe size. Pipe sizing, as I hope you know by now, is a very vital part of gas pipe work. We need to supply the volume of gas required for the appliance, but we also need to maintain a tolerance within the pressure range. I'm going to give you round figures so that you understand where I'm coming from so we don't mess too much on that one. If we have 21 millibars coming out of our meter on a low pressure system, we should have no more than one millibar drop across the system, therefore no less than 20 millibars going into the appliance. I'm going to do a couple of, we're going to do a couple of uh, simple examples of pipe sizing. Remember what we're saying? We're looking to maintain a pressure, but we're also looking to maintain that pressure with a volume of gas over a distance. Now the two examples I'm going to show you first are very simplistic, but just show you the difference and how to use the chart initially and how a different pipe size can completely change uh, the pressure loss across that system. We've got two little systems here. Very simple, very straightforward. In fact, it's so straightforward, they haven't even got any bends. It's a straight piece of pipe. Just to show you initially the example of that. First one is 10 metres, 30 foot, 20, 10 metres of pipe, up to 15 kilowatts of load. In other words, that boiler is going to use 15 kilowatts of gas per hour. That's the idea behind that. Uh, yeah, you can convert that to uh, metres cubed. But in this particular case, there's actually no need to. You can just work off it and know it's one of those situations. Same with this one, shorter distance, but now a bigger, a bigger appliance just to show what difference it makes. 
What you must do on something like this is use a little bit of uh, professional knowledge, if you like, or experience, which I know you don't have a lot at the moment if you're in the process, but it will come in time. And you get a feel for what size pipe you need to put in. Now remember, ideally, I, well not ideally, exactly, if you've got 21 millibar coming out of there, you must have no more than one millibar pressure drop across the system, so you should have no less than 20 millibar at the inlet, inlet to the appliance, and still supplying sufficient gas to provide 15 kilowatts. The principle behind pipe sizing is um, it's quite straightforward once you understand it. What they're basically saying is, if you have a, one size of pipe, they will give you, at a pressure, a certain volume through that pipe. What you'll find from a standard pipe sizing chart, if we were to use a 22 mil, say, we'll say this is 22 mil pipe, copper, copper pipe makes a difference, different internal bores can make a difference, that will pass a 22 millimetre pipe over a distance of 15 metres would pass 3.4 metres cubed per hour. Now to put it into more perspective, 15 kilowatt, 15, if you were to multiply that by a factor of 0.095, that will come in at approximately, and I've already done it, uh, somewhere, I don't need that, there we are, 1.42, 1.42 around figures, uh, metres cubed per hour. So you need to know, it's good to know load, and it's good to know the actual kilowatt input, okay? So what they're saying, you're saying 22 millimetre pipe, if I have 21 millibars there, I would have no less than 20 millibars when you get to the other end. Now this is working pressure. Working pressure is actually the gas moving the appliances on. The appliances on. 21 going in, 20 millibars at the other end of that pipe. 15 metres. Remember this is an example straight from the chart. 15 metres. Therefore, I like that word, therefore, if I go approximately halfway along there, believe it or not, I'm going to have 20.5 millibar. If I'm a quarter of the way, I'm going to have 20.75 millibar, and etc. If I'm a quarter, 20.25. In other words, the pressure drop across that straight piece of pipe is what you call linear, it's proportional. The further you go, the more the pressure will drop. The further you go, the more your pressure will drop. Now the old pipe sizing systems worked on the theory that if that's the pipe you've picked and you're only going that distance, what would you have pressure drop? Quite simply, you're gonna have, I'll pick it up to the top here, from here, halfway along, you're gonna lose half a millibar. By the time you get to here, you'll have lost 0.75 of a millibar, and obviously nearer to the source, you'll have lost uh, 0.25 of a millibar. So as you can see, as the distance goes, so does your pressure. As the, as the pressure loss increases, your pressure reduces. That sounds a bit of a backward statement, but if you can sort of get your head around that, the further you go, the more pressure you will lose. And this is what most of these pressure loss calculations are based on. Don't get too bogged down by that. We do understand it is a proportional pressure loss the further you go. Going back to this one for a second, we're saying 10 metres 15 kilowatt. Now the good news is, a little chart I'm going to show you now, uh, sort of simplifies this. What we talk about is, when we look at these sort of charts, you'll find more often than not, 
that they don't specifically give you the volume or the size that you actually want. So let's just say, for example, 15 kilowatt. Ideally, it's doubtful the chart will ever give you 15 kilowatt. It will more likely give you 14 point, as an example, 14.8 or 15.2 or something like that. So you will always go, always go to the nearest one to it, but slightly above, not below. You don't want to have less volume, you want to have more volume, so you've also got something in the uh, background, if you will. So we're going to look at the chart and we're going to look at 15 kilowatts. I've taken away some of the uh, more confusing parts around there to try and keep it simple initially. We'll just work on input in kilowatts for the moment so you can see how the chart works. I've got the tuning on with a hitchy nose. But the chart in front of us here. Um, the chart shows you three different methods. It shows you both the flow rate if you wanted to work on meters cubed per hour, but it also gives you both gross and net uh, CV, in other words, the input in kilowatts. So for today, we're going to work on net uh, kilowatts uh, to work out the pressure loss. As you come across the chart, you start to get columns of numbers. And across the top of here, you'll also see pipe sizes, pipe sizes across the top. If I go up to the, uh, literally the, uh, let's just say down here, uh, 51 kilowatts, I know we're not on that, but just an example, 51 kilowatts, if you come across, as you can see, it doesn't even show you 51 kilowatts up to 15 mil, because you're going to need bigger pipe work than 15 millimeter. So 51 kilowatts starts at 22 and goes up to 35. Now the number in each box, that's on 22 millimeter, the number, it says 0 0.1996. Now that is the pressure drop in millibars. It's the pressure drop in millibars per meter run. In other words, however many meters you go, that will be the pressure drop per meter. So you literally multiply the distance by the pressure drop per meter. So if we come back up now to this example, I'm going to give you two for each of these examples. I'm going to do it in 15 millimeter pipe, and I'm going to do it in 22 millimeter pipe. And if I use the chart here to simplify it again, I find the nearest I can to 15 kilowatt, and the nearest I can to 15 kilowatt is 17.19. And like I explained, the charts, if you had a specific chart for everyone, it would be pages and pages and pages long. So they simplify that by doing it in stages. I can't tell you why they, they actually do those specific jumps, but it works. You always look for the one nearest to your volume or input, but the one above it. And the nearest one I can find on this chart, 17.19. If I come across now to 15 mil, so I'm going to assume it's going to need at least 15 mil, going back to that experience thing. Don't forget, when you work these out, if you wanted to, you could do every pipe size on the sheet. It wouldn't help you, but it, you would, it, there's nothing wrong with that. So don't think you've got to know which size pipe it is. This is the whole point of doing this. You can do two different sizes, even three if you needed to, but two, you've, used, you've usually got an idea by this stage what size pipe you're gonna need. Do it two different sizes, see what pressure drop you've got, see if it works. So we're going to do, um, excuse me, put the pen down now, 15 mil, now 15 mil is uh, point, no, point 0.1832 millibars per metre run. That's per metre. So we're going to multiply it by the distance, 10. So that will, that's going to come to 1.83, I wouldn't bother too much about more than two decimal points on the actual pressure drop, 1.83 millibar. Now straight away, what have we said? We've already said that you're not allowed to have more than one millibar drop, so we know straight away 15 mil isn't going to carry that over that distance. Let's just take you back to that one very quickly. 15 millimetre pipe we've chosen. The pressure drop on 15 mil 
per meter run is or for that volume for that input is 0.1832 millibars per meter so for 15 kilowatt going in to get that volume for 15 kilowatt on 15 mil pipe i'm going to have a pressure drop of 0.1832 millibars per meter so if i multiply that by the distance i'm traveling 10 meters that comes out at 1.83 millibars won't work it's far too much pressure drop so if we take it up to 22 mil now the uh the factor for 22 mil is very quickly find it again lost it there we go note point note three one one now i'm going to multiply that by 10 meters and we're going to come in at uh note point uh three one millibars now we're nicely comfortably in fact within the tolerance of one millibar pressure drop let's go back to that very quickly 15 mil factor for that volume or that input is 0.1832 millibar drop for every meter run we are going 10 meters multiply it by the number we're coming in at 1.83 millibars far too much pressure drop 22 mil over the same distance same input but now the factor for 22 mil is slightly less 0 0.0311 multiply it by the distance now we're coming nicely under at point three one of a millibar it's the third of a millibar the next example uh, is slightly bigger input in fact it's uh, 10 kilowatts more 25 kilowatt but over a shorter distance just to show again different principle We'll say again, 21 millibar and 20 millibar, no less than at the uh, appliance. Needless to say, we, call, we know 15 mil is not going to carry it because it wouldn't carry it for 15 kilowatt. So we're going to start with 22 mil. 22 mil, but the factor on 22 mil for 25 kilowatt is slightly different. If you come down your chart, it's saying for 22 mil, the factor it's 27 on this one which is a little bit nearer than the other one point no point zero six six three there's a five on extra five on the end of that one we don't really do much about that one uh, but we've always wondered why it's there nobody seems to be able to tell us multiply by eight meters so that would come in at i've written this one down because i can't remember off the top of my head not point five three millibar so that's fine that's a good that's a good pressure loss nothing wrong with that half a millibar you still got plenty to play with at that but what about if we were to use 28 as an example 28 millimeter pipe uh, the factor on that one is 0.0183 we're going to multiply it again by eight meters that comes in at on my reckoning 0. 1.4 millibars so let me just see them there 28 mil, mil pipe would work no problem but there's very little pressure loss if that was the only appliance i wouldn't hesitate to put 22 mil in if i was going to put extra appliances on later this is something you've got to consider i might be tempted to say put perhaps half that in in four meter in uh, 28 mil and then reduce to 22 we'll come to that in a, in a few moments um the pressure loss on that is great but as i say if that's all the appliance you're going to have you don't need to have that much pressure loss one of the factors that comes into pipe sizing and it's a way of the world unfortunately you've also got to consider cost yes you need enough pressure yes you need enough volume and yes you certainly need to build in where possible future future growth future extension call it what you will you may need to want to put more appliances on at some time and it's cheaper to put the pipe in now while you're doing it initially than to rip it all out and put it in again just time alone will put the price up so uh, it's just something to consider if you are 
if, if there's a chance that that system could be extended, have I got enough volume there to carry the extra in the future? Just something to be aware of on that one. So, going back very quickly, we've only gone eight metres this time, but this time we've a bigger load, 25 kilowatt. 25 kilowatt on 22 millimetre, factor of 0 0.0663 millibars per metre run. We're doing it eight metres, comes in at 0 0.53, just over half a millibar. 28 on the other hand, slightly less because of the bigger volume, over the same distance, only 0 0.14 of a millibar. So in reality, both those pipes are correct, but it would depend on the system do I just stick the 22 or do I put some 28 in because I'm going to make the system bigger? I've slightly altered the drawings now to take into account uh, fittings on the system. Again, very simple, but just to show what difference it can make to a, to a gas supply by putting some restriction. A restriction, as crazy as it sounds, a deviation or a bend on the actual pipework. What we're going to use uh, alongside that, the original chart, well, I've already put these figures in because we've already seen those previously. I've not, I've not put the 15 mil in because we've already proved that 15 mil won't supply that. Uh, so it isn't going to get any better by putting some restriction in. This one again, same factor now, it's 25 kilowatt, same load, same drop per metre run. But now the distance is going to change because of the extra uh, fittings that we're using. We have a factor for every type of fitting that will cause a restriction. So a socket, a straight piece, straight connector, doesn't come into it because there should be theoretically very little or no restriction going through it. So we talk about um, 45 degrees, if you will, that can cause a restriction. Uh, a 90 degree bend, an elbow in other words, or a sweat bend. Now a sweat bend is one you would break on a, on a machine, you know, the, the bending machine, uh, or perhaps even if you're big and strong enough, uh, to, if, if you use a bending spring, we're not supposed to use those anymore. Uh, so using a machine bend, so it's a less, it's less of a bend, it's, it's just as much of a bend direction wise, but less restriction. It doesn't have to hit the end and turn, it sweeps round. So there's less restriction. And of course, you've got to also look at uh, a branch or a T, call it what you will. Now, if you're going straight through the T, I'm going to draw it for you, so I can give you an example. If you're going straight through the T, in other words, literally straight through it, you don't count that as a restriction, it's just the same as a socket, you're just going straight through it. You only count the T if you do that, in other words, you turn and go up it. So if that was a, if I make it a little bit more realistic for you, I'll make that into a property. If you did that, that would be a restriction because it's a major deviation. Or if you're coming the other way, get rid of my horrible blue pen. If you're coming that way, that would be classed as a deviation because you're obviously going to have to turn one way or the other. So that's the only times you would count with the T, okay? So, in both systems, we've kept the same distance, I've kept the same input, so we've got the same factor. All I've done different is, I've given you two, two elbows on both systems. Two elbows. At 90 degrees. So, the straightforward, as you say, normal straightforward elbows. But, the factor or the restriction or the extra length of pipe that creates changes because of the size of the pipe. So 22 mil, for example, 22 mil would be uh, off the trigger of the chart would be on an elbow 0.6 of a meter extra. So now, because you've got this, it's 10 plus two times 0 0.6 of a meter. That's the elbows, one, two. So that would be 10 plus 1.2 meters. So now our length is 
11.2 meters. I'll come back to that in a second. 11.2 meters. What we're saying is, by putting some restrictions on that pipe work, we are physically extending the pipe work if it had been still a straight piece of pipe. That extension would account for approximately 1.2 meters extra because of those two elbows. So now we're multiplying that by, uh, by uh, 11.2, not just 10. And we come out at, because I've already done this, I do apologize. Uh, that calculates out at 0.34 millibars. I've used the same pipe size, I've used the same distance, but of course, as in the original one, we put the extra two elbows. The factor for the elbows, as I've mentioned earlier, is 0.6 of a metre extra for every elbow. So that's what I've done here. There's the original, um, that's the pressure drop per metre run. And there's the extra elbows, two times the 0.6, which gives you 1.2. And that's plus, of course, the original eight metres. Now calculating this out, we are looking at now, of course, no point, of course, 0 0.663 multiplied by the new length of 9.2 metres, and that will give us a pressure drop of, I'm going to be absolutely spot on with this one this time, uh, no point 0.6 meet, millibars drop. So it's slightly higher than what it was before, but not by a lot, it's on 28 mil. Because it's that little bit shorter, it carries it. The 28 mil, on the other hand, there's the extra for the elbows. Notice it's slightly more than 22, it's 0.8. So using the same principle, there's the pressure drop per metre run. That's going to be multiplied by 2 times 0.8, which is the elbows, the extra distance for the elbows, which comes in at 1.6, obviously, plus the 8 metres will give us 9.6 meters total length including the elbows the additional length that the elbows create so now we are going to go 0.0183 pressure drop per meter run multiplied by 9.6 meters will give us a pressure drop of 0 0.17 millibar now that's not much more than the other one, but it just shows the principle. Uh, I would just slightly increase it by putting the extra elbows in. Now, if you notice, that is a little bit bigger jump. If you remember what the figures were before, 0.14, I think it was before. Not 14, up to 0 0.53, I think it was. It took you up to 0 0.6. That one took it up from 0.14 to 0 0.17. It doesn't make that much difference a couple, but you imagine a good length, it's very often difficult to get anywhere with straight pipe. You've got to deviate around corners, especially domestically. Uh, it can be a, a real nightmare sometimes trying to get that length over a distance. Because people don't want the, the piece of pipe straight down the middle of the room for obvious reasons. So you've got to deviate quite often and the bends could cause a real problem. It's just something to be very aware of. In this particular case, we're using the chart. We're using the chart for the pressure loss. We're using the additional chart for the pressure loss per metre run. There are other methods uh, for the uh, fittings. There are other methods. Some systems uh, just say, well, add 10% for the fittings. You've got to be a little bit careful on that one. Uh, that's more of a commercial setting but well, they do, do sometimes use it on a, on a domestic. I'm going to clean this off now. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you one, because this is very simplistic. I'm going to show you one with two appliances, just to show you what difference it can make. Okay, well, I'm going to show you that now. Now we have two appliances on one system. The principle remains the same, but you've got to remember that you've got to have enough gas to feed both appliances. So what we've, I've tried to set it up ready for you to see what we're talking about. There's your meter, two appliances. I've used the same two appliances, 15 kilowatt and 25 kilowatt, but now they're attached to the same system. And I've used the same distances as well, four meters, five meters, and six meters, just to keep it simple. One point you must be aware of, 
in this situation is you still got, even though you've got multiple appliances, you've still got individual systems, which can be a bit confusing. First, first appliance, appliance number one, is its own system, even though it's attached to the pipe work of this one. Appliance number two is its own system, even though it's attached to the pipe work of appliance number one. They both have a common pipe, and I've lettered them just to make it a bit easier, A to B, B to C, and B to D. Now appliance one, as you can see from what I've put here, would be A to B, A to B, and B to C. And those two added together will come to no more than one millibar. Appliance two, same common pipe, A to B, but now we're going to have B to D. And those two pressure drops added together will come to no more than one millibar. One thing you must remember is there are ways you can sort of look at the system and sort of get a feel for what you might need. Now, as you get more experienced, you will start to think, well, I need this part, that part, the other part. But initially, it's good to be able to work out uh, differing pipes so you can see which ones work and which ones don't. Now, remember what we said. You've got to have enough gas there at B to feed both appliances. So you could say it's critical at that point you have enough gas to feed both appliances. But it's also critical you've got enough gas going into the appliance to maintain that pressure drop of no more than one millibar. So if you can see it, appliance one has one, two critical points, appliance two has one, two critical points. So what you could say is one divided by two, 0.5 millibar. Now that's just a guide figure. It's a guide figure. You know you could have half a millibar there and half a millibar there and have one millibar. Perfectly, perfectly correct. But it just gives you a little bit of an idea. So if you've got a high pressure drop there, you really are restricting what pipe you could use on the next section. You, ide you ideally want to be coming down in size. There's no law says you, you have to, but quite often it's a cost thing as well as a, a performance thing. Um, so if you've got a, a really just a really small pipe going to that, you might have to put a bigger pipe going to the next section where you could have reduced down. And we'll see how it works. So initially we're going to work on the original input of total input of 40 kilowatt. That obviously comes from 15 and 25 added together. So I need enough gas at B to carry both appliances. Okay, so we've got the 40 kilowatts. I'll just put some numbers down just to save. We've already worked these out before, but it's just to show you where they get the numbers from. Remember, we've got 40 kilowatt at B. We've got to have it off there. So, using what we already know, I've used 28 and 22 just to compare. 40 kilowatt, 28, 4 meters, 4 meters A to B. That's the factor directly from the chart for, excuse me, for 40 meters or 40 kilowatt, sorry. Uh, and slightly over 41.5, 28mm, 0 0.0382, 4 times 0 0.0382, remember that's millibar drop per metre run, 4 metres times that comes out at 0.15. Just, to an ex just as an experiment, I did it on 22mm, same distance, but now the factor on 22 is 0.139 millibars per metre run, that comes out at 0.55. Well, remember what we said, we could have around five, but that does limit you, does limit you for um, the next pipe. So what I've used my, I've made a, a decision, and you, you have to do this yourselves, it doesn't matter, because if it doesn't work out, you come back. But I've decided to go from A to B, using up here, I've used A to B 0.15. Seems low. It seems low, but just, just go with me on this one for a moment, 0.15.
The next section that we're doing is from B to C. And again, we're going through the straight through the fitting. So theoretically, there's little or no restriction. And we're working now back to the 15 kilowatt. And this time I've chosen two different pipes again. I've chosen 22 mil and I've chosen 15 mil. Okay, so if we come back to the input of 15 kilowatt, the closest we have on our chart is 17.19. 5 meters times on 22 mil, 0 0.0311 comes in at 0.15. And 15 mil for your 5 meters. Multiply by 0.1832 comes in at a staggering 0.91 of a meter cubed. Sorry, of a millibar, sorry. 0.91 millibars. Remember now we've got to transfer one of these numbers across to that uh, list up there. So if we went from very quickly, I'll wipe it back off again. If we went 0.15 for the first one. A to B, and then we went from B to C again with 0 0.15, or we could have A to B, 0 0.15, and B to C, 0 0.91. Can you see straight away now we've got 0.3 of a drop, not much that, I'll give you that. If you look at the other one using 15 mil, no, sorry about that, 6, is that 1.06, that's right, isn't it? 1.06. So we're over the 1 millibar. I know it's very close, but we're over 1 millibar. But more to the point, had we used the 0.55, which would have fit our, our guide figure, we would have been one almost 1.6 millibar over. So you've got to look at the different sizes and pick the numbers that work best. In this particular case, we're going to go with that one. Even though it's slightly low, we're going to go with the 0.15. So the pressure drop from A to B and B to C added together comes in at 0.3 of a millibar. I know that's low, but that's the way it works out. Apply this two on the other hand, we know we can't use 15 mil, and we don't really want to use 28 mil, so we've used 22 in between. But it's slightly different now, because now we've got an elbow, and we've also got a branch or a T, call it what you will. The elbow, We'll turn it around so it's a little more realistic with our drawing. It's going to be there, and we've got obviously a T there. So the elbow is going to be there, and the T is going to be going like that. Does that make sense? If we go to the chart showing the fittings, we're going to come across, look for the T, or look for the elbow, but you must make sure you're on the right pipe size. 22 mil says for an elbow, is 0 0.6 of a metre and for a T is on 22 mil is 1.8 metre. What do we mean by that? We mean the restriction of an elbow or a T physically increases your pipe length. Remember all these pipe pressure drops across the pipe work are all based on a straight piece of pipe. So Rather than try to complicate the issue, they say if you've got a fitting in there, it extends that pipe. Rather than try to work out the actual bends, they say if you've got an elbow, it increases the length by 0 0.6 if it's 22 mil. Look at your chart, it's 0 0.8 for 20, uh, 8, 8 mil, and it's actually a full metre for 35 mil. Just one fitting makes a big difference. So, going back to this, we've got six metres. We've said we've got six metres, one elbow, one T. Those two added together, 1.8 comes to 2.4. So that's six metres plus the 2.4 for the fittings, gives us a total of 8.4 metres. 
Now we multiply that by 0.66, but we're back to the other chart now. 25 kilowatts, the closest to that's 27. On 22, 0.0663, just using the four numbers, 0.0663 multiplied by 8.4 comes in at 0.55. Now, if you look at that original figure of, uh, sorry, here, original figure of 0.55, that wouldn't work. But now, if we put that in there on 22 mil, we put 22 mil and 28 mil, same for that one, 28 mil and 22 again, 0.55, which gives us a grand total of 0.7. Yeah. Which is an absolutely spot on pressure loss. Nice, nasty under one millibar. Um, but, but under one millibar, less than or no more than one millibar. That was slightly under. 15 mil wouldn't work. If, if we didn't have this system on, we could have got away with uh, 28 mil and 15 mil just depending on how you balanced it but in reality the, the figures wouldn't have worked out 0.15 plus 0.91 that takes us over a millibar um, in real in the real world i mean this is very simplistic in the real world you might carry on on, on here with another meter perhaps two meters of 28 mil and that would make all the difference to your pressure loss across that length but just using this as a simplistic method of working out, what I want you to be able to see is you can literally just chop and change your pipe on paper just to see what you get. It doesn't take any longer. Once you've done one, you've got the theory, you pick the number off the chart, work it out. Only thing you got to remember is are you on? Do you move? <laughs> it might sound silly, but it's easy to do, it's easy to get wrong. Make sure that you're on the correct uh, input. Uh, in this case, 15 kilowatts, so we have to be on 17.19. 25 kilowatt for the uh, bottom one, uh, we have to be on 27.01. It's just, a, just, you're just going to be a little bit careful. It's very easy, trust me, to get uh, on the wrong section of the chart. Brief overview again. Total input 40 kilowatt up to B. We're then reducing down to 22 mil in this particular case to carry it down to that appliance five meters away on 15 kilowatt. Yes, they are both slightly low pressures, but the good news on that is it does give you a little bit of scope. If you wanted to add an appliance onto that, you know you've got quite a bit to play with. You've got quite a bit to play with. Those two added together coming in at 0.3 of a millibar. Appliance 2, we're coming off that branch, that T, which gives us a restriction of 1.8 metres extra, and then an elbow down here, 0.8 of a metre, sorry, 0.6 of a metre extra. Those two added together, 2.4, extends that pipe work up to 8.4 metres. Multiplied by the factor straight off the chart for 25, which is close to most 27. Straight off the chart for 22.0663, first four digits, multiplied by 8.4, comes in at 0 0.55. 0 0.55 on the original, added to the original drop on A to B, comes in at a very nice, comfortable 0 0.7 of a millibar. As you can already see, there are different methods, we could, depending on what laws you've got. Are you expecting to upgrade or consider that? It's always easier then cheaper to put that bit bigger pipe in initially uh, rather than having to change it at a later date. You've got to use a little bit of common sense on that as well, obviously. But that's the bit I need you to get your head around. It's once you understand the chart, understand the extras for the fittings, don't be frightened of writing this down and using different scenarios. I've tried two different pipes in both those cases just to get an idea which is going to be the better option. But the obvious, but the bottom one, I've just gone straight on. I know I'm not going to get it with 15 mil. 
and I don't really, for cost, want to put 28 mil in. That said, it might have paid me just to put 28 mil down here and then 22. In reality, that's much better what I would do, but as a simple diagram, that's we just do it on one bike. I hope that helps a little bit. As I say, don't be bogged down by it. Try and work through what I've put on here. Try and relate it to the chart from the book. This chart, by the way, is also in the uh, um, British Standards and various, various other publications. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot of, there's a lot of access to it. And the figures are all the same in there. It's, as you get more experienced, you'll, I shouldn't say this really, but you will sort of use it less and less because you'll get comfortable knowing what size pack to put in. But initially, you really do need to get your head around this and understand how it works. Because as you get more experienced, you may come across systems that have been put in incorrectly, or appear to have been put in incorrectly. And it's worth them being able to check it yourself. You know then how to do it. Uh, it might be a, you've gone to say a boiler upgrade. Is the existing pipework sufficient to carry it? To carry the extra load? And then you could work it out from this. It, it, it's a simplistic way, but it works. It works. A um, bit of practice, a bit of, bit of thinking, you'll get through it. Thanks very much anyway for looking at it. Thank you. Thank you for that, Russ. Um, I hope you found this video of some use. Bear in mind, you will need to know this sort of stuff for your ACS gas assessments. Um, but if you do have any questions, please ask them in the comments below and we'll try as best to answer them and maybe come back and do another video on pipe sizing or whatever other type of video um, that you would like. Thanks for watching.